Welcome back to our coverage of the Miami Book Fair at Bookview Now. I'm Jeffrey Brown of the PBS NewsHour. Back after, of course, it had to happen. I just took a walk. It's wonderful to take a walk around here and feel some of the uh, thrill of thousands of people. But it is Miami. It does start to pour. I got caught in the rain. It had to happen. But I've dried off. I'm back. Back to be, glad to be back here. And I am joined now by Lauren Goff the author of the new novel, Fates and Furies, okay. and also a finalist for the National Book Award. Congratulations to you. Thank nice to you. see you. Great to see you. Thank you. You know, um, the question of how something begins is one I often don't like, but in your case, having read the book, I really did wonder, how did this story begin of a marriage in two parts? Well, I am married, but I'm incredibly ambivalent about the institution of marriage and had it been my choice. That's a funny thing, I funny know, way to start. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I could have started anywhere because there I'm are so married, many different... I'm married, but I'm ambivalent, I'm ambivalent about, about the institution. And the, no, but I, Not about the no, particular. My particular marriage is the best thing I've ever done. Okay. So, okay. no, I've, I'm right. very, very glad about this. Okay. But, um, but so for a long time, I've actually thought of writing a book of marriage, right? Sort of like Mr. Bridge and Mrs. Bridge by Evan S. Connell, which yeah. is just astonishing beautiful books yeah. or Jane Gardam's Old Filth uh, trilogy. Yeah. I don't know if you read them. It's, I, I read the first but not the latter. Yeah, yeah they're amazing. Yeah. Um, so I've wanted to do this for a long, long time. And my initial idea was actually to, to write two separate books, um, uh -huh. sort of like Mr. Bridge and Mrs. Right. Bridge. And so in the middle of writing my last book, I, which was very much about anxiety and utopias, and it was very much about everything that was going on in my heart, I mm -hmm. thought nobody's ever going to want to buy this book. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to write something else completely different and mm -hmm. push against it. Um, and uh, while I was writing that book, I put up on my wall these two huge pieces of butcher paper, uh, one for the husband in this marriage and one for the wife. And I would get up in moments where I was despairing about the previous book and just write the heck out of um, this one on the wall. So, but did you end up writing one and then the other? No, I wrote them simultaneously. Um, and then I gave them to my agent as two separate books and he told me I was ridiculously silly and uh -huh. he had to put them together. And he was totally right because sort of the, the form of a marriage is what the form of the book ends up being. Right. Um, right? It's his story and her story together in united in a in one book so so part one is the, is mostly the story of the hus from the husband's point right. of view part two is mostly the story of the wife so of course we're sort of seeing many of the same incidences from their perspective right right was that was that fun to do it was incredibly fun to do yeah. yes this whole book was incredibly fun to write yeah. i threw in everything that i knew and a lot of things that i didn't didn't know I was know. it hard to do though i mean sort yeah. of keep in your head well, there's this incident that I need to bring back in part two. Yeah. No, it wasn't hard at all. Um, no. no, because my style of writing is different and yeah. um, strange, and I do layer upon layer upon layer until I sort of know the story and the character. So I, I write a draft in longhand, throw it out, start over, and do that as many times as I need like to. Like literally throw literally it out throw and try, it out. To, try to set it aside, forget it. No, I throw it out because I don't want to give myself the opportunity of going back and looking and sort of mining what I've done before because what I'm doing is trying to build the architecture of the story before I actually sit down and you know pay attention to the line by line. Uh -huh. um, so it's really important to me to do the structural aspects of the story. So when, when I do that, when I do layer after layer after layer, I end up understanding the story on a very deep level. So it wasn't hard at all to sort of write from both points of view. I, I was curious, though, because I recently talked to John Irving, and he mm -hmm. sort of famously writes backwards. Yes, he, he <laughs> starts at the end, he knows the end, and he fills in the, the very end, and then he fills in the whole story. Yeah. That's not you. No, no, but by the time that I sit down and actually pay attention to the the lines, I know the entire story, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's I, I do know the end, but I also know the beginning, I know all the other But what, what kind of special storytelling problems or challenges were there in this kind of a book as opposed to other things you've read? Well, you uh, this is an immensely complex book. I mean, mm -hmm. and there are many different modes of storytelling in it. You know, I use plays and I use operas and I use, um, uh, there's this sort of dream sequence that I don't want to talk too much about because this book is very spoilery if I say too much. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and, and um, both. I've, I've been restraining myself. I know, it's of really course, difficult. So we're talking about it without giving away. The, right. yeah. um, and uh, the first part of the book, Lotto, the husband's part of the book, um, is written in, in a different style than Matilde's part of the book, right. which is a completely different style, just um, on a line by line level. And so I, it was really just balancing all of these fun elements together and trying to make them sing back mm -hmm. and forth. Almost, um, you know, it was like call and response in a certain way. Yeah, 
but in very different voices in very different that you voices. were aware of. Yes, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, I asked you before we started if you had studied Greek and classics because there's so many references here yeah. that run throughout, sometimes very explicitly, sometimes just sort of you, you see it if you know it. You yes, know? good, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always my intention, right? To oh, sorry, to throw in everything that I, I love into a book. And that's um, sort of the beauty of writing a book over the course of multiple years is that when you have a passion, you just throw everything that you've learned about that passion into the book. And so I have Shakespeare in here too, and I've got a lot of Greek mythology, a lot of Greek tragedy, um, a lot of Greek drama. And I, all the Greek stuff was because I, I got into this three-year phase when I would take all these MOOCs, these massive online courses about um, you know the Greek hero. And, really? you know, yeah, it was like it was the best thing ever because they're free. They're taught by the most incredible professors on the yeah. planet. Um, and you can do so that. So you're one of those people out there yes. taking the class. I'm, and, a, I'm a total geek and, and, and nerd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's wonderful. I yeah. recommend them to everybody because they're just phenomenal. You know, we're talking about these two different voices, but then there's this other voice, that, which yes. is set in parentheses throughout the book, yes. and that, that comments on the action while sort of standing outside it. In Greek terms, it's a kota chorus. Yes. In a, uh, but it's also, a, is it an author's voice, sort of looking in at her characters? Yes, it's also... Is that fair? It's a, an aside, too. You know yeah. how in plays there are asides that are addressed directly to the, the mm -hmm. audience. So um, it's, it's a lot of different things at once. And um, I have an idea about what this voice is, but I do not want to impose it on any reader. Mm -hmm. But this voice is a, a more elemental truth than the sort of granular human truth that's happening on the page at the moment between these characters. Right? It's, a, it's, a, it's a distancing technique in a certain way, and it's a way of stitching both halves of the book together mm -hmm in a very real, bracketed manner. Yeah. And I, I stole it from um, the Virginia Woolf book to the lighthouse. Oh, which yeah. is, do you know that central section, time passes? It is yeah. extraordinary yeah. and it's beautiful. And what, what it does is it talks about time passing and not just the human sort of level of time. It's yeah. this grand sort of um, vision of time passing with through wind and um, the disintegration of a house. And it's just the most beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. and, the human moments come in in these bracketed sections. Yeah. Um, and they, it makes the human moments so much more poignant and meaningful. And what I did was sort of flip that idea a little bit. And so the, the bracketed sections were sort of the larger, more elemental, more you know distanced um, yeah. perspectives and point of view coming I like that text. you said that you stole it from Virginia Woolf. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, all these references that you're talking about, and it's clear you're a big reader, right? Yes, yeah. But I mean, you, stealing, that's, that's great, right? I mean, that's fine. Yeah. Well, as long as you're not stealing the words, right? Yeah. You can steal ideas, yeah. as much, yeah, yeah. right? As long as they're not, um, you know, patented. So you you started off by saying um, you what had doubts about the institution of marriage, but not your own. <laughs> but you probably get a lot of people wondering um, how autobiographical this yes. is. You do, yeah. I do. Yeah. It's not at <laughs> all. No, no, yeah. but it never is, uh -huh. right? I, I write fiction, um, so I put myself into everything and every character, yeah. but uh, it's not autobiographical whatsoever. Yeah. Um, which is really funny because each one of my books is very, very different. And so people, if they truly believe that I were, was the characters in all of these books, would think that I had a very strange life. Yeah. Whereas um, instead you're actually sitting home lo listening to moves. I know. Right? I'm a very boring person. I'm a hermit in Florida and I have two small children. So that's my life. Yeah. yeah. Let me just ask you finally, does, does one story, it's the story of one marriage. Does it add up? I, I, this is obviously more for the readers, but I want to know what the writer thinks. Does it add up to a story of marriage, you know, rather than oh. a marriage? No, this is for the reader to answer, right? Yeah, okay. I mean, if, if I were I to answer this, that, yeah. I would impose that upon the reader. Yeah. Um, in my mind, it does, because I wouldn't have let the book out of the house if it didn't. Right. But I, I, it, it's, it's a modern reflection. It's a mirror on uh, the institution of many things, you know, privilege, uh, gender relations, sex power um, mm -hmm. and marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay, the new <laughs> novel is Fates and Furies. Lauren Gra Groff, thank you so much. My pleasure, thank you.